Christmas Day 2015. Most people are at home having Christmas uh, festivities, etc., all around the world, but instead we decided to go to Pumapunku and Tiwanaku in Bolivia one more time with two experts. We have Antonio Portugal, who's been studying this area for at least 30 years, and then we have Rosemary, who is a healer who was born in this town 13,000 feet above sea level in Bolivia. No. I mean, this is on what they... Right, this is the seventh... This is the levels. seventh level. This is the seventh level. Yeah, this is the upper. Yeah. Yeah. Here, in, eight, in 2008, they find a tunnel, it goes to the temple. I bring a plane so we can show you better. This tunnel, which one? Here's the gate with the wrong thing, you know? Mm -hmm. This is the gate to get in. Which one represents in this side? Mm -hmm. You got different levels. This is the pyramid. This is the tunnel, which one has 55 meters to get inside. This tunnel is 45 centimeters wide by seven, uh, se, 70, 70. 70 wide. And a small person can get into the tunnel. Mm. She did it before. In the second level above this pyramid, we find stalactites. Mm. as we can see in this picture. The longest one measures 50 centimeters. If an stalactite grows two centimeters and a half every 100 or 150 years, plus the 50 centimeters, that means that Tiwanaku or this part of the Tiwanaku has more than a 12,000 years. Mm. That's the main thing about this tunnel. Mm. Now we got so many tunnels in Tiwanaku. It's a net of tunnels and uh, underground cities also. This is just the beginning and in the future we might going to be able to find your kids mm. are going to be the ones who's going to be happy to find those. This area has been excavated and as you can see it was originally, or it was buried in mud, and so it was excavated about 15 years ago. But the important point is the erosion of the sandstone. If this was buried by this mud for possibly thousands of years because of the buildup, that erosion happened before it was buried, giving it an incredibly ancient age. So if we go back thousands of years before the Tiwanaku culture that ended about a thousand years ago, before it was a so-called religious or spiritual site, it could be, or could be that the original builders were doing something pragmatic, and I think it's possible this could have been a metallic ore processing plant maybe 15,000 years ago. Evidence of that is the fact that uh, you can find gold, silver, bronze, tin, in great quantities in this area and look at this piece of stone. So here we have a green stone that has been analyzed and it is 36 percent copper. If you were to melt this stone down you would have a separation of copper, possibly trace elements or trace bits of gold and silver as well and then you would have the silicates and other sand -like things separating. An Australian mining engineer called Tony looked at this, or Anthony, and he said if you flip this thing upside down, it looks like a channel that could move water. And if it was moving water, it could be moving water and metallic ore. 
and the ore itself would focus itself into the center and that way you could move the sluice into some kind of container for further processing. A year ago the area that I'm standing on was three feet lower than it is today. They did an archaeological dig here and I witnessed what they were exposing which was more stone underneath but instead of continuing the excavation they didn't only rebury it, uh, rebury it, they reburied it and filled it in by three feet, supposedly to protect the site, one would guess, but maybe to hide the evidence. So Rosemary, who was born here at Tiwanaku, had a very good spiritual explanation um, of how this was used by the Aymara people, or probably still is, possibly the Tiwanaku people before. This sunken temple is sunken because it represents the underworld, uh, represented by the serpent, which is wisdom. And then the Kalasasaya, which is on the main land, is the middle world. That's uh, the modern day, that's the here and now kind of thing. Um, and that's represented by the Puma, and then the Akapana Pyramid is upper, and that re represents the upper world. Also, the underworld is the subconscious, middle world the conscious, the upper world there, superconscious. So when you have subconscious, conscious, superconscious, you have a complete mind and one of profound power. Unfortunately, this was all reconstructed in the 1950s to the 1980s, but look at the level of erosion on this stone. It doesn't look like it's rain or wind and sand in this area. It looks literally like water was lapping uh, against it for hundreds or if not thousands of years. And contrary to popular knowledge, um, Lake Titicaca, which is about eight miles that way, is incredibly dynamic. It has gone up and down by at least a hundred feet, if not more, over the course of thousands of years. And as odd as it sound, it is, uh, sounds, it is possible that these vertical monoliths existed at the time when the lake level was high enough to lap at the shore or lap at the stone causing some of this erosion. So again the site was not started 2,000 years ago. It could be many many more thousands of years older than what standard academia as usual will recognize. And they talk about sunken chambers or underground chambers here at Tiwanaku, and here's the evidence of one. This could maybe just be part of it. You have interlocking stone, no mortar, and this is the great andesite that comes from the quarry, which is by some estimates 70, other estimates 120 kilometers away. This is one of the most important monuments that we have in Tuanaco. In America, there are just two calendars. One is in Mexico and the other here. But today, I'm going to show you one of the most important phases of this gate. It will be better for me to explain you in this drawing. The important of this is that Viracocha is in his knees in the pedestrian holding two staff of power. You can see from his face in around a big aura or energy representing but Pumas and other. Why is he holding everything in, in, is in his knees? Because a human being will burn. This is anthropologic figure with the tail of the fish. But this is so important that is guarding by ten animals, or somorphic figures. 
four pumas and the top and six serpents with the head of the puma guarding until he will born by this horn. I was asking Flora archaeologists and researchers what did that represent. I'm very sure nobody knows it. I leave in your heart to think what it could be this figure.